Okay, so this is a test on all this equipment that I had set up a long time ago, and I'm going to practice a little bit of editing, so I just need something to record that I can edit down. I think that's it. So I'm going to read through a Quora question and then take a look at the quality. My camera is set up here, and I'm going to be reading from a screen over here. There we go. I look very tired. I'm a little tired. All right, so I just thought it would be interesting semi-interesting to read through a Quora question about programming because I read these regularly. I haven't read this one completely yet. I'll read through it and then commentate, I guess, on it as I go. Why does software code always need to be constantly refactored? Let me tell you a real story first. One year when Albert Einstein was teaching at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, it was time to set examinations. When Einstein handed over the exam papers to his teaching assistant, the assistant noted that it was the same paper that Einstein had set for the class the year before. The assistant inquired the master, isn't this the same exam you gave to the class last year? Yes, yes it is, replied Einstein. Emboldened, the assistant asked, but how can you give the same exam in a class two years in a row? Einstein replied, because the answers have changed. In computer science, something similar happens all the time. Any software can be seen as the answer to some question. The problem is that the correct answer for the same question changes all the time. For example, imagine a game. The game must evolve all the time because people and competition require permanently a better game. What? Uh, just look at Flight Simulator as a simple example of a game. That is not a simple game. That must be refactored all the time or it will die. Just ask yourself, would you like to continue using Windows 95, for example? Yeah, what this guy is saying makes sense. The reason I brought up this question at all was because refactoring is something that's kind of interesting that I didn't understand when I was a younger engineer. And one of the other ways that I've heard it portrayed is by saying that software is a wicked problem, which is kind of what he's describing in these first couple paragraphs. The definition of a wicked problem that I saw was a problem that you don't fully comprehend or understand until you start solving it. So the problem evolves as you're trying to solve the problem, meaning basically you can never get it right the first time because you don't know the the comprehensive solution from beginning to end. So let's see what he has to say. I'll read the rest of this and then I can go through the parts that I think are interesting. This point is very important in computing to know that there is no software created that's never modified. All programs must be designed to be refactored at all times, not doing it is the main reason for failure. Creating a software for the first time is relatively easy, easy. The difficult thing is to create a software that is so easily modified permanently. That, I do not like the way that this guy uses permanently. <laughs> that, that's not what permanently means. Anyway, however, this is exactly what all programmers should do and what differentiates it, the bad encoder from the good the ability to create programs others can easily modify in the future. This is something that's often uh, not understood, in my opinion, by both programmers and like managers, is if you are trying to prioritize what you want your software to be, maintainability should be like right behind it working at all. Um, other people are going to have to look at it. There are going to be bugs that evolve not because you wrote the code incorrectly but because the requirements have changed what he's talking about is basically scope creep although the way that he's mentioning software it sounds like it's something that's just like a one-off project that you're the only one working on i can go into my career and what i do well i'll just say it's avionics software where the requirements are engraved in stone and uh put together by like a committee of very experienced engineers usually, or at least one engineer that has really been hammering at them for a long time. And they're basically engraved in stone. The fact that you'll have requirements and the software absolutely has to follow those is just a given. That's not the same in every industry I know. So avionics gives me a bit of a weird uh, perception of the way that other software industries work. The important thing here is both programmers and managers undervalue maintainability of code or readability or whatever word you want to use for, I can pick this up and understand what it's doing in like two minutes. And if I have to actually modify it, I know exactly where to go. 
And when I do modify it, there aren't side effects. The code is clean. All those things are, are super important. On the programmer side, what I've seen people have problems with is they will come up with an incredibly clever solution that is very, very hard to understand when it gets down to the actual algorithms of what, what is the code actually doing? And I do some algorithms are arguably just very complicated, but I think you can make them simpler if you go back and revisit them over and over. And if you really understand what you're trying to do anyway, uh, programmers sometimes will simplify code to the point where they're like, look, I had this function that was a hundred lines of code and I made it two, and it'll be like a list comprehension or something in Python. That's, you know, pretty long. And then it, it has another list comprehension or, or some other piece that is complicated. And unless you comment the hell out of it, it, that's worse, depending on what the hundred lines were. If they were copy paste code, that doesn't count. If they were just thinking it through, this is how a person would think it through. Arguably hundred lines is probably too many, but you know, 10 or 20 lines uh, might not be bad. That's one of the things that's a constant juggling act of, of, how much can I get away with with something clever like a list comprehension versus just a for loop? Anyway, let's see what the rest of this says. Believe me, efficiency in code is definitely the most important aspect of the program, except the ability to easily up update it. It is because of this, and only because of this, that the programmers write clear and understandable codes. This guy must ha uh, be Russian or something. His English is good, but he uses some wor words oddly. A program that, oh, edited, a program that can not be easily refactored will be quickly and inevitably useless. Therefore, any efficiency will be useless too. On the contrary, an inefficient but easily refactored code can easily be re refactored to make it efficient. That's very true. Remember, today a lot of people are going very fast to nowhere. Oh, is this just a, a signature thing? Well, more important than speed is the direction. The life of a programmer is like driving a car. To keep it on the road, you must move the steering wheel all the time. Eh, okay. Yeah, I agree with uh, the basics of what this guy says. I would have written it differently. It's funny. He kind of made the point for me about efficiency. Programmers can be like, and and this made sense in like the 70s. You would get into C and you'd be like, oh, you know, if you break this line down to the assembly level uh, and do this, then it, it runs a hundred times faster than it would otherwise. And those savings were crucial and absolutely wanted in programming. Now everything is so fast, there's no reason to do that. And in my opinion, the idea that I need to be able to understand this code and other people need to be able to understand this code needs to come first. And then you go in and find the parts of your code that are huge time sinks, which you won't completely comprehend until you're actually doing testing later. Some of them you can tell. A lot of times time sinks are sunk into the parts of your code that are complicated anyway, that you need to revisit and break down again. Anyway, the point of that is there was a culture where coding efficiency or code efficiency, its ability to run quickly on the machine mattered. It doesn't now. Everything is so fast. And I work in avionics, so the hardware that I'm working on is old and bad. Well, it's not bad. It, it's much less powerful than what you would normally be running on because it's very expensive to get hardware onto an airplane. So you can't just be like, let's use the latest and greatest hardware every time you build a new airplane. There's a bunch of obstacles that you don't have to deal with in other areas. And still, it's much better to have readable code than really fast code. A lot of times they're one and the same. The other thing is compilers are so much better than they were originally. And even in avionics, we're using compilers that are yeah, maybe... 15 years old to 30 years old, but they are still optimized. You might run into an instruction or two that the compiler does a really bad job of optimizing. And that's where you go back and refactor your code and say, in a giant comment, I have to do this this way because if I do it the way that you normally do it, it's 150 times slower. And I do this a million times in my program. So I have to clean that up. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video here and edit it down, find editing software, I think, and see if I can clear this up. 
For the next Quora question, maybe I'll write a little script. I think it would be easier to edit if I have a script and then I know what I'm going to say. Yeah, 